What's up, team man? How you doing? I've been better. You know? Folks, my name is Sean Murphy, and I just, I really want to just thank you all for being here. You know, we're all here for one reason, and it's because we love the woman named Granny. We're all here because of her, okay? So today is all about sharing her memories, the love that she gave, the laughter that we had with her. Just the sharing, the sharing of good times, all sorts of times. I want you to feel free to come up here talk from the podium so we can have you on the camera take your time we're all family just thank you all for being here i'm going to bring tracy up and she's going to start off and then we'll slowly just go from whoever's comfortable all right folks thank you for being here today a lot of pink here today everybody knew that pink was her favorite color um, thank you for all who are here today to help us celebrate my dear mother's life. If you spend time with my mother, you realize the sun always shines. She had a way about her that she could take something negative and make it positive, take a rainy day and make it a sunny one. I bet you didn't know this, but she actually had dreams of becoming an archaeologist. Although my mother had a hard life, you wouldn't know by spending time with her. Amazingly, she shared with as a young girl how they would run into the bomb shelters during World War II until one day my granny said, forget it, we're not leaving. Her mother had tuberculosis and she was in and out of sanitariums a lot because that's what they did back then. On the lighter side, my dad describes he, he would see her walking by the movie theater of where she worked and that she had this beautiful red hair and he was mesmerized. And that's when my mom, Margaret, turned a frog into a prince. <laughs> Fast forward, by age 22, she had three children under the age of three. When we were young, we had 13 puppies at one time, and she loved it, the Canadian version of 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> one of her proudest moments was when one of her dogs won at Westminster. I remember being angry with her because I'd be looking for advice, and her advice was, don't sit in the sun, be happy, and enjoy your family. I had to tr figure out the rest by myself, but I know now that she had confidence in my ability to get through anything. I am a woman I am today because of her. She knew I was stubborn, and I probably wouldn't have listened to much more than that. What a wise woman. Some things I miss about my mother. I miss Erin and her saying, you did me, you did. I miss shopping together. I miss having martinis with her. I miss the times she let me get away of some crazy things, like letting Stacy, Rose, and I take the car when we were 15. <laughs> I miss her sharing historical events and her fascination with the lives of famous people. I will eat, miss her eating half her meal and sharing the rest with me. I will miss her saying, I love my wee house. 
I cherish our long drive to California where she wouldn't shut up. <laughs> I will miss her stealing salt and pepper shakers as if nobody knew except the one day when she was holding them up and a cop knocked on the window and said, give them back. <laughs> My brother and his family were over for dinner one night and we were trying to think of what to make for dinner. She said, let's get one of those chickens and shove a beer up its arse. <laughs> Another famous saying would always make us laugh was, for fuck's sake, <laughs> excuse me, kids. <laughs> Every time she told me I looked beautiful, I would believe her. Christina, I don't know if you all know, but she was voted the most beautiful woman in Canada. My mom said that's because I was out of town. <laughs> I miss giving her lipstick and her giving me hers. When we'd be in the stir, when I couldn't find her, I would say, Margaret, Margaret, no response. So finally, when I would find her, I was like, Mom, why didn't you answer? She said, I'm your mother. I'm not responding to Margaret. I would say, okay, Margaret. <laughs> I remember when my two beautiful children were born, and she was there for both their deliveries and the first one to bathe them. She knew how to put my mind at ease and help me enjoy the moments and not worry about anything. The lessons that I learned from Margaret is to love your family and cherish your time together. In closing, I would like to share a poem. She's always been there for me. Just talking to her can make me happy. She tells me of the hard times she's been through and hopes I won't go through them too. She is an independent woman of stature and grace. She has beautiful eyes and a lovely face, an audacious strength from deep inside. I know in her, I can confide. She is my guardian angel who will always be very special part of me. She takes pride in caring for her family. She gives us hope and things to believe in. If I did not have her there for me, I wouldn't be half the woman I turned out to be. Mom, you're my hero and I will never forget you. So today, we honor your last witch which is to celebrate your life, and yes, we'll have a martini. I love you, Mom. Thank you all for honoring the memory of Margaret by supporting her family. Uh, I was her uh, husband for 14 years of her life. Um, thank you for the warmth, love, and care you have lavished on Margaret's family. She existed for her family. She existed for her family. That's all that had meaning for her. Margaret's compassion shows up in her family, her relatives, and her valued friends. Valued her treasured children, Dean, Aaron, and Tracy, as with all her grandchildren, Dean's son, Zachary, Aaron, Aaron's daughter, daughters, Alexis and Ariel, Tracy's daughter, Tatiana, and son, Carrington. Uh, she was incredibly, unbelievably, uh, in love with them all. All of which are individuals, individual, uh, individ I can't understand my handwriting. Uh, all of which are individually, collectively outstanding examples of her compassion, and that's true, her intelligence, and her street skills, and her talent and influence. But her family was a major, it was just her priority. The spirit of love that Margaret gave to her family and friends 
was insurmountable and she blessed all of us that knew and loved her with her presence. And she had a sense of humor that was outrageous. None of us would be the same if we hadn't been gifted by her loving, spirited presence in our lives. Can I repeat that? None of this, including me, would be the same if we hadn't been gifted by her loving, spirited presence in our lives. May the rest, may she rest in peace in God's heart and mind. May her influence and spirit-filled memory bless us all with that love. May her influence and spirit-filled memory bless us all uh, with love-filled compassion. May Margaret live in heaven forever in peace and joy enclosed in God's love. Uh, amen. amen. Uh, I gave you those two pictures because she was pregnant with Dean, and she was she was pregnant a month with Dean, and uh, she was gorgeous. When I fell in love with her, and she was gorgeous up until the end. Big hearted, and she loved you all. changed my life and she changed all your lives and her power and strength her power and strength and intelligence is expanded in all her family including her cousins aunts and uncles and whatever thank you dear grandma margaret i will always remember you as the cheerful caring loving and comical grandma that you were to me. Whenever we had time to, whenever we spent time together, you always made it a priority to ask me how I've been, what I've been up to, and specifically how my athletic endeavors were going. You always loved listening about my competition, about how my competitions went, but always made sure to ask if I loved it and if I had fun doing it. You said as long as I had a passion for what I did, and love doing it from the bottom of my heart that you'd be happy for me. You taught me this very important life lesson when I was young, and I'll always be grateful to you for that. I always cherish you and the lessons you taught me. I know that you'll always be up in heaven watching over me and cheering me on in my future competitions. I'll be sure to honor you in all my successes and every time I score a touchdown or win a gold medal, I will point up to you and you will point down to me and we'll know. Love you, Grandma. Mom didn't want us to be sad. In the last uh, few years, I used to drive Mom to most of her appointments, go shopping, and we used to speak about a lot of things. And she used to talk about this day. And she always told me, I don't want to. I want everybody to be sitting around feeling sad about me. And she said something like, uh, remember, remember me and celebrate me. Um, I was very blessed. She don't sit around being sad. She had a lot of good people in her life and that says something about mom. And there's a saying, uh, you can't choose your friends. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. And uh, I think I would have chosen mom. And there were times that I didn't feel like that, but uh, looking back through all the stuff, I think I can truly say that now. Um, <laughs> Mom always laughed, and she had a, she always wanted us to laugh. She had a lot of good talent. She was a good mom, of course. She was a great cook. She was a pretty good dog trainer, fairly good nurse, and she had some impressive athletic ability, and you know. That's what I would call it. And I think she may have been ambidextrous, kind of. She was 
drive down the road and if you were misbehaving, she could, <laughs> she could reach back and smack you, one hand still on the wheel, and the car would still keep heading straight. <laughs> it never swerved and I'm still impressed by how she could do that. And I know I always thought that mom wasn't religious, but after reading the Bible's bed, I now can realize that mom truly knew the book of Proverbs well, like Proverbs 29, 15. The rod and reproof get wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. I think mom practiced that. When I was young, I just thought she was strict and mean. Now I realize she had some relig religious authority behind her. And discipline was well placed and scriptural. Who knew? Mom loved her grandchildren a lot. She always spoke of you guys. And she always was very proud of all of you. She spoke about you all the time. Um, she would talk about times when you were little, spending time with you, and she could tell different stories over and over and over. <coughs> and I, oh, this one again. But she just loved all you a lot. Sometimes I think she was happier to be a grandma than she was to be a mother. And, uh, you know, Mom loved to laugh. She had a great laugh. And she had a great smile. She was warm and she could be friends with anyone. And if you were Mom's friend, uh, you were just like family. Or actually, to Mom, you were family. And she had a big family. She was very forgiving and generous. And I hope I can get some of that in my own life. Thought about a lot of things in the last few days, and you know, after talking to her, a lot of things she told me. She, you know, I don't think she's gone. I think that for those of us who knew her, she will be there forever, and she'll live on in all of us. And I know that was what you would have wanted. So don't think of her as gone. Instead, you learn that place in her heart that you made for her, because I think she's there, and she'll always be there. Keep her there. Smile or laugh when you think of her, because I think that's what you would have wanted most. Rest in peace, Mom, I love you. Granny was a person all of us had the privilege of knowing and loving. She was famous for her gorgeous jewelry, big heart, and bad mouth. She taught all of us countless bad words, and if you say she didn't, you're lying. <laughs> she was one of the most fair, loving, and kind people in the entire world. It was a privilege to be loved by her. Words cannot describe how much I love her and how much she had an impact on all of our lives. I racked my brain this past week trying to come up with my favorite memory with her, but I finally came up to the conclusion that I can't just share one. I have countless stories and lo lovely memories of her and her accent and crazy dance moves when she had a little too many martinis. <laughs> However, I believe that the memories we all have of her or with her shouldn't fade as time passes. We, sh we shouldn't stop talking about her. Her life and our memories should continue to be told throughout our lifetimes because we all know that her tales and acts of kindness should carry on just like the love we have for her. smile and her laughter was infectious. She always had some stories to tell and always made you laugh even when she wasn't trying to. <laughs> Carrie always has something positive to say and always had a new cuss word to teach you. <laughs> Yet in a way she's one of the most amazing women you would ever meet. You could be talking to her for a second and fall in love with her and her personality. My funniest memory with Granny was when I was about eight years old and she came to visit us in Chicago. Somehow my mother convinced me to massage, her, to massage Granny's feet. So I said yes, and as Granny took her shoes and socks off, 
everyone erupts in laughter because in front of me was Granny's four toes. That was after the <laughs> that day, Granny had the biggest smile on her face. <laughs> it was pure, pure beauty. She was the most gorgeous, caring woman out there. A few years ago, I got my tonsils out, and Granny was there. And when Granny was there for me, she made sure I was taking my medication and rubbed my back to reassure me it was going to be okay. Granny made me feel loved. Made, made us all feel loved. She was a special woman. She'd know how to have a good time. She'd always, she was always smiling, always laughing, and reassuring us that we were all going to be okay. In, in her Scottish and Canadian accent, which, which we all loved. And will always be remembered. Rest in peace, Granny. Well, me and Karen weren't going to read this, but I think we decided we're going to. So this is a letter we wrote. Um, okay. Granny, this is surreal. I cannot believe this is actually happening. I'm still waiting for you to walk in the house and offer us some Trader Joe's toffee. You were always there to turn up the TV too loud and make us laugh. <laughs> you always told me your rings were mine when you died and I never thought that day would come so soon. You always said the funniest things without realizing it. Nighty nighty. We never, um, well, Well, we're really happy we got to spend our last couple years with you when we moved out to Arizona. You impacted our lives in ways nobody could ever understand, and we cannot thank you enough for that. I'll always remember the times we went to your house. The times we went to your house. Carrington said, I'll always remember the times we went to your house and you had ice, had ice candy and had cream soda, um, got your mail, and then the many times you took us to get combos. We never get combos until we were with you. So thank you, Granny, for all. <laughs> I made the combos by McDonald's because we'd always get the regular hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, Granny, for all the little things. Because a lot of little things make a big thing, and that big thing is that the gift of all the memories we have with the best grab ever. Well, Tanya and I had a funny story to share to lighten up the mood. So she, we would always go over to her little house that she called her wee house, and um, she let us drive the golf cart around the block even though we were not old enough to. And um, she had several TVs in her house because she loved TV so much. And so we, had, we always got away with so much stuff because she loved us so much. So we took her remote for her TV and the golf cart, and we went around and around the block, and every time we passed the door, we changed the channel to make sure. And she would, she would we, could, we, we knew that it was changing because her screen door was open, and she'd yell, what the hell is wrong with my TV? And she would say, We also, one time, we, we took her walker. We used to live all together next door to each other in Verado. We used to, it was really downhill, and we took her walker one time when she was supposed to be babysitting us, and we went out the back gate and without her knowing because she was watching TV. And we decided that it would be a great idea to sit on her walker and <laughs> ride down <laughs> the beach to the bicycle. We have two stories. <laughs> okay. 
So the, the first time you <laughs> the first time. No, the, the, well, first time we rode her walker down the hill. And, like it was like some extreme sport. <laughs> no, no. And then another time with the walker, we just thought it would be fun to tie Carrington, put Carrington in the walker and tie it to the back of a bike. So then he got hurt, and we made him, we made him promise not to tell the parents, even though he had this big gash on his leg. So we didn't want to get in trouble. So we were going He's up like the crying. hill, and we thought it would be a really good idea to make sharp turns. And it played out really well. And I fell off sometimes and you know screwed up my elbow a lot. And then. I remember the final time one of the cords got on down and they flipped one way. Cards come in. So I took it out of the street really fast and I had this big cut on my arm. So I had to run inside and go into the bathroom just crying and scrubbing it. <laughs> trying to be really quiet. And, and her yeah. walker, like the, the part of it broke and she always wondered why. I just told her that she she fell. And <laughs> so she never knew that we broke it. <laughs> Um, we, were, we were like telling Carrie to don't cry, don't get us in trouble. And we just start start crying, and then we have to like bring the walker back. And, and then we thought we were in the house the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and then another time, we we should prank call her all the time. And we used to call and say. Because she used to have, live in the little city with the club and say, We cannot start karaoke without you. You're not here yet, and you are the, the leader of the club. So you need to get here. She would always scream and yell and say, I'm moving out. <laughs> and We have lots of stories, so if you guys, if they ever come to our mind, we'll tell you, because they're, they're worth telling. Thank you for the memories, Granny. <laughs> My memories of Margaret go way back to when, um, when I met Dean, and so I've known Margaret since uh, Peggy was still around, and they lived in Windsor, and Aaron, you had Corey, and I just remember a lot of laughter. I couldn't understand Margaret's mom at all, like maybe every 10th word. I was like, there's a guy. I don't know what she's saying, but she laughed a lot. <laughs> she had such a big accent, I couldn't understand her, but she smiled all the time. And I thought she was really sweet. And just, Margaret, my memories of Margaret are always just her kindness, really. She just, everything that you guys have said is exactly my experience with her. And, I'm her daughter-in-law, and she just was always loving and kind and sweet. And I was so young when I had Zach and unsure of how to be a mom and didn't know what I was doing. And she never made me feel bad or that I was doing anything wrong. She was always helpful in the, in, in the best way, like just in a way that's like, hey, this, this is what I did, maybe you want to try it instead of making you feel like you're doing it wrong. And so she was always loving about it, and if she couldn't help me in the situation, she would make, you know, make some amazing food. She was a really good cook, and she sort of always make the best of everything. She's always a positive person, and I just have great memories of her because she was just funny and fun and sweet and just a really great mom. She was my mother-in-law too, and when my mom died, she was there for me, and she um, just kind of took over my mom's role. And when both of my girls were born, she was there for both of them since I didn't have a mom. And um, her and I, the last couple of years, have had so much fun, and I'm going to miss her so much. I've gone through some really dark, deep stuff, and she, her and I would sit in our pajamas all day long and watch movies and just laugh and talk and she would just make me laugh so hard about some of the stories that she would tell me about Aaron and Toby and shooting BB guns at people across the street. <laughs> and just some of the stories and then the stories that the kids tell and the one about the karaoke and we used to prank call her all the time and she used to get so mad and she was going to move out of that place. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, um, and, and she not really thought that they were people that were doing it. And I, uh, think and I would take her shopping and we would go out for lunch um, and I talked to her every day. I don't think I missed a day where I didn't talk to her, and I can't take her out of my phone. Like she's, 
I just sometimes want to just call it, just hear her voice. The part about talk slowly because of <laughs> little senile. She <laughs> would say that on her answer machine. On her answering machine, it says, please talk really slow because I'm getting a little senile. <laughs> and um, I just, I can't take it off of there. I, I have it on there. So she was an amazing mother in law, but I couldn't have asked for anyone else. I used to have to go over and she had a million pets and animals and she was, um, I used to have to go over and put lettuce out every day for her rabbits, the, the wee rabbits that would, that would come in her backyard and quails, the baby quails. I'd have to go put breadcrumbs out when she'd go on vacation and so every day I would have to drive over there. I'm just, I'm gonna just miss her so much. Just our lunches together and our time that we spent together. She was amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up, so does anybody else wanna say anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just <laughs> The two things that, The things that my mother taught me, two things, were unconditional love for family and believe in your dreams. I was a crazy 19-year-old kid I told her I was going to go to Hollywood and be in the movies and everybody thought I was out of my mind. I didn't know anybody in any family. Yeah didn't have any family in the business and she said go live your dream honey you'll be anything that you want to be it's like wow wow i don't think if she would have really made me believe that i would have ever went i really believed what she said i was a crazy one but she validated all of that i was lucky enough to get lucky and end up acting on shows and movies, and she was uh, there a lot of times to come see uh, what I was doing. She took her father uh, once to Calgary, Alberta, when I was directing uh, a film, Sam, Sam Hamilton. Her maiden name is Margaret Smith Hamilton. So when I went under contract to ABC, they said, you don't look like a Bornstein, you gotta change your name. And I didn't even blink, and I said, Hamilton's being Hamilton, in honor of really her. So, uh, Mom, thanks for making me. Skilled and talented. Believing in my dreams and helping me believe that I could do it. She, uh, came to Puerto Rico, Cuba, and lots of other places where she got to actually see it happen. And she said, keep dreaming. Promised her a couple of trips. She came out for Super Bowl weekend, and I promised to take her to Rio this fall, where we're gonna be filming. And then again, in <sighs> 2016, she wanted to go. See Zach compete. So I hope if there's anything that I've learned from my mother that I've passed on to Zach is believe in your dreams, man. Anything you dream you can do. You work hard enough. Anything you want to do, you can do in life. That's a great thing for a parent to pass on to their children. Thanks, Mom, for that. 
thanks for uh, all your unconditional love that you gave all of us. And, and I think Aaron and Tracy are right. Everybody's right. She wouldn't want us to be sad or upset. She wants to celebrate her life. Because she really touched, she really touched us all. She really, you yeah, know, special. It's like a little poem, actually. Uh, Christina's sister sent me, it's pretty beautiful. It's called The Little Ship. I stand watching as the little ship sailed out to sea. The setting sun tinted her white sails with golden light. And as she disappeared from sight, a voice at my side whispered, she is gone. But the sea was a narrow one, and the farther shore, a little band of friends had gathered to watch and wait in happy expectation. Suddenly, they caught sight of the tiny sail, and at the very moment when my companion whispered, she is gone, a glad shout went up in the joyous welcome, here she comes. I love you, Mom. Anybody have anything else to say? All right. We're going to go have a martini for Barry. So, at my house.